Hello, everybody. Welcome to yet another edition of Paradigm Shift, an educational comedy. And this is Dave Kelso here with Jay Larson. And uh, for those of you who understand how solar flares and magnetic storms relate to consciousness and paradigm shifting, then we're about to show you some really interesting shit, especially for those of you who have had a really interesting week for March 1st to March 8th. And by the way, today is my birthday, March 8th. So, silver return, you know, I I aged a year and a day. I've just got that magical talent like that. Okay, I'm going to enable screen share mode. Alrighty then. Jay, can you uh, see the screen share mode? Is that coming through? Yes. Okay. So first we're going to start with the magnetic storms. This is March 1st. The green, of course, is calm. The orangish yellow is the build-up, and the red is, holy shit, look what's popping. Now here's March 2nd. We're still popping. March 3rd. Still popping, but with a little bit of calm in there too. But we've got these doom, doom, doom. Frickin' sun's playing us a symphony orchestra of frickin' paradigm shift. March 4th, you know, moving into a temporary calm. March 5th, we're at the calm. March 6th, oh, we got a little more orange spiky coming. Moving into the 7th, even more orange spiky activity. And then moving into the ace, still on that same pattern. And, you know, in the next few days, we're probably going to see more red. So you can see that the sun's been playing us a bit of a symphony orchestra. Now, let's check out the solar flares, and we're going to start on the first. We got a buttload of C-class flares. Yes, C and M don't do much, and not not too much CME from what was causing most of the magnetic disturbances <laughs> the past weeks as have been the uh, uh, solar wind coming from the from the sun, you know, in the in the black spots, you know, the openings. That you see where the solar wind comes out. Yeah, well, with even C and M class, when you when you have a lot of them, a lot of them, it all adds up. Yes, yeah, what you get is a lot of stabilization caused from the solar wind, uh, which are highly charged and our magnetic field is not as strong as it used to be. Yeah, you broke so up our <laughs> He had some distortion going on. Mm. Uh, but lately, there, there, there's been an uptick, and this last, this last solar flare was. Uh, M class that was nine nine point two, which is almost next class. Well, uh, I figure in the next week or so we have uh, a select X class flares along with our with, with possible magnetic disturbances. Well, we'll be getting to that in a moment here. So there's March first, and then we'll move into the second. Mm -hmm. 
we got a whole shitload of, of mostly C's, a few M's, and then... Yeah, so you, you can see uh, 18 solar flares were observed. And we move into March 3rd. Six solar flares. Sun's still giving it to us up the butt, but only six that day. That's still quite a bit. Then going into March 4th, three solar flares. March 5th, another five. March 6th, another eight. So as you can see, day by day by day by day, it's like machine gun fire. <laughs> We're just taking it like a bitch. Yeah, March, after March, se March 7th, five solar mm -hmm. flares. And then we just moved into, into March 8th, so no solar flares observed yet. And we just moved into, yeah. in, into March 8th on central time. It's currently 12.36 a.m. The other time zones are still on March 7th, and uh, the, the thing's in UTC time anyway. If, if you notice that on March 7th there is about 4 o'clock today, actually. Yeah, and remember, M9 they're going by UTC. They're going by UT uh, Universal Time or Green Greenwich Mean Time, basically. Yeah, I can see the M class nine which, point two, which means our next day begins <coughs> begins at five five a.m. I mean five p.m. here in Phoenix. It would be about. 4 p.m. where you're at. Yeah, and this this last yeah, week, this last as far week. as speaking, um, as far as what issues it's been bringing up and everything, it's been mostly the internal battle with a little bit of external reflection and dealing mostly with uh, throat chakra issues. In other words, expression. Primarily, our right to feel how we feel and know that we're not doing anything wrong. And oh, you're getting a lot of police dropping off too. You get you get a range between the solar plexus and the throat chakra. Yeah, but it's been mostly about. Uh, about owning our, would be with, owning uh, our emotions. Yeah. And dealing with a lot of shame and guilt stuff, and realizing that it's it's societal programming, um, that there's really nothing to be uh, ashamed of or guilty of. So there's a lot of uh, empowering and positive reflections, but I'll. Also, at the same time, you know, we're taking a little bit of external shit as well. Like, especially within the political arena, there's been a, a lot of sentiment of, you know, from some idiots that might come in that's like, oh, well, if you say anything against Obama, then you're prejudiced against black people. And I've been getting a little bit of that flack, and I just laugh, and I'm like, okay, well, what about what about black people who don't like Obama or don't dis don't agree with them are they self haters <laughs> you know and I just kind of laugh it off and then it all just kind of goes away because you know th these people don't know how to how to deal with that and a lot of uh, other people I, I know are people. getting similar huh I tell I tell people I'm ready to everyone else you know <laughs> to everyone <laughs> I don't leave anyone out <laughs> My dad likes to say, I'm not prejudiced. I hate everyone equally. Yeah. 
But yeah, I'm there's unprejudiced. I'm prejudiced. I like my personal view. <laughs> yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, anyway, so a lot of people have been basically experiencing reflections of peer pressure and, and gain, gaining new friends and losing old friends and a lot of a lot of social shifting especially as they give themselves more permission to just be themselves and to know it's okay so there's a lot of things to be dealt with and even in the world events political area Oh, and, and the, fact of the energetic pressure in the last few days, of the, about every three days, it doubles. So yeah, it seems are, to. You know, it's, yeah, it seems to. It's really affecting people uh, on an energetic. Things are, you know, people are all over the place. Some of them get really goofy. Oh yeah, in the in the climax of this, uh, Rich is down sick right now. I mean, he's just getting freaking energetically butt raped, so he's had a lot of upset within his sinuses and stuff, and getting sick with that. Well, I've been getting nosebleeds and all kinds of stuff. But, you know, just minor stuff. Uh, um, but, you know, my, uh, my mother's in the hospital because of a, a lump in her left lung and what have her, and she's having problems. But, you know, it should, but, you know that, that's what they told me when, when I you know, I had the heart problem. They found that mass in my in, in my right lung, but they didn't know what it was. They went to do a biopsy because of the heart problem. They had to work on the heart before they even checked it out. But at that time, I had the heart surgery. You know, uh, they uh, and they decided to do something about it. That had me take an X ray and they didn't find it. <laughs> and, well, and, and the funny part is, they say, well, you know, they tried to, they thought it might have been a blood clot, the, the heart specialist, it wasn't one specialist that made the decision, and they started giving me rat poison. And, you know, I started bleeding in the bowels from it because. So uh, I cut out that stuff, and about a month or two later, they checked me, and there was nothing in my lung. And I said, well, the clot must have dissolved. Most likely it was just an inflammation that no longer in flight, you know, just a slight infection or something. You know, you can't tell on an x-ray. What it is, that's why they do biopsies generally when they can. Scarlet Blue just messaged Scarlet me Blue. on Facebook and said it was really nice talking to you tonight. Much love. Interesting that she messages me while I'm on this hangout. She usually mm -hmm. replies more publicly, not privately. So. Interesting synchronicity there. So she gets to kind of see herself on a paradigm shift episode later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I noticed too that I've been only getting one or two hours uh, in a 24 hour period of sleep. For, and this has been the last two weeks. Yeah, sleep schedules are definitely being disrupted. And a lot of people have been reporting feeling like um, when they're laying down, they feel like getting up. And when they are up, they feel like laying down. A lot of anxiousness. Well, I feel tired, but I don't. Uh, can't sleep. 
Yeah. My sleep schedule's just been all over the place this last week. Whenever we have these high energetic periods, like sleep schedule, what sleep schedule? <laughs> the hell is that? I don't know what that is. <laughs> mm-hmm. Things are getting better. I, I figure by March 17th, it will be when it really gets good, then you go have a, a period after probably the, after the, you got that, you got that solar eclipse that's going to happen on the 20th or 21st of March. Then you got the blood moon on what, uh, April 4th. So we're in, we're in for an interesting period. Yeah, it sure seems that way. Well, I'm going to have to go. I'm going to have to go for now. Alrighty. Alrighty. So, so I'll say goodbye. Yeah. Lots of books. Alrighty. Well, that was interesting. I was also going to say that you know, this week people seem to also be facing a lot of, uh, you know, their their belief systems about how the world works and what they've been taught versus uh, what they're starting to realize. You know, things like a lot of people see, see all the chaos and stuff and they're like, oh, you know, the world is getting worse and da-da-da-da-da, but really... The world's getting better because awareness is rising and more and more people are seeing all this bullshit that's always been here. We, you know, we're seeing the mess, so to speak, so we can clean it up and decide what we want to do and understand it. Whereas if things were getting worse, then, you know, we'd all just be completely, totally stupid and oblivious and not even aware at all that anything is wrong and just kind of blissfully slowly sailing to our demise so to speak if if the world was getting worse but because it's getting better and awareness is rising um you know we're starting to see and understand all the bullshit it's kind of like if you took a medieval person you know from back in those days and you know put them on a bus and start the bus rolling they could see it one of two ways they could either realize that they're on the bus and the bus is moving forward or they can think that they're in a stationary building and that the land has suddenly become demonically possessed and is uprooting and jumping around all over the place and people who look around at the world and go oh my god no it's getting worse it's terrible and this and that and da 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 you know they're under the impression that the that the land is uprooting and it's cursed and it's demonic and they're not realizing that they're on that bus of awareness that is moving moving forward in, into truth and moving forward into the ability to be able to, to face what's going on and, and figure out, okay, well, how do we want to deal with it? And obviously the first part in the grassroots level, even below the grassroots level, is facing it in our lives and within ourselves and understanding that and figuring out how we want to deal with that for ourselves personally because you know the first battle is internal um recognizing the programmed bullshit that's been fed into us and indoctrinated into us all of our lives and our own internal hypocrisy and and contradiction and you know ego and insecurity all that and kind of owning that and understanding that so you know then you know we can start learning how to shift and um realizing things that the ideal of of world peace that most of us have been brought up with is 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 nothing but nazi ideology because there's no way that everyone can get along that everyone can agree that everyone's going to think the same way and all have the same understandings. You know, that's that's pure Nazism. And um, 
all peace means is just a lack of conflict. And conflict is created when people are like, my ideology and my view is the only right view, so now I'm going to force that on you. Kind of like how a lot of these New Agers, you know, they're they're all love and light until you say something that, you know, they disagree with or don't like or whatever, and then they, they're they full of all this rage. <laughs> Instead of taking the more compassionate, understanding attitude, they're just like raising at, raging at you like you just freaking tarred their cat and set it on fire or something. And you're just like, whoa, where'd the love and light go? Because, you know, all the light does is it, it illuminates a dark room so you can see what's in there, you know? Um... <laughs> love and, and light it's all about illuminating the dark room it's it's not about running from the dark or shunning the dark and letting the roaches breed in the wall so to speak when you judge negativity negatively that's that's being negative and when you see negativity as a positive opportunity for positive change and understanding and learning and growth and you know it's a very positive thing and it's these sorts of issues we're coming to terms with and like how a lot of the the truthers and the truth movement and all that you know they're all about uh freedom and and truth and equal rights and you know all against tyranny and so on and so forth but i've noticed that a lot of them have no problem with having a very tyrannical attitude and supporting very tyrannical views as long as that is being wielded against people that they dislike or that they disagree with, which is usually other truthers. Um, so it is very, very interesting, the, the, these sorts of things that are coming to light and, you know, we're kind of being forced to contend with that and face our own hypocrisy and learn how to not judge ourselves for our hypocrisy and just be like, all right, well, you know, it is what it is. And, you know, I've been programmed with this shit and I can let it continue to co-opt me or I can just forgive myself. And, uh, and yeah. Oh, and look, General Tate is calling. Um, I think I'm going to let him in here. Yeah, I just, I, I mentioned him, and uh, he pops up. Look at that. I'm just, I'm just going to give him an invite into this. Okay. So we'll just wait for him to pop in. Which should be any moment. Do 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 And here's Rich. We are broadcasting. We are broadcasting live. You are on a PSEC episode. Um, we were where Jay was here. He just missed him. And we're just talking about the solar flare and mag magnetic storm butt ray that we've been getting for the last week and all of the effects and revelations and so on and so forth that it's been having. So I've are, I've already. I, well, let me finish first real quick. I'm just telling you that I've already just got through explaining how that has affected my, my reality and, and Jay and, and the world at large. And you were mentioned a little bit ago. I briefly mentioned how it was affecting you. So you may as well speak for yourself, as it seems like you're, you're about to do. So I'll mute my mic as you describe your own energetic butt rape for the last week. Okay, very good. Um, well, I just happened to be browsing around on YouTube, and I happened to see that this little wonderful event was live, and I was like, oh, so he is on. So I, you know, flashed Dave's attention. Um, <clears throat> it's been an interesting day. I'm 
feeling much better today. I've been very active and, you know, uh, cleaning stuff up around here. Got all my stuff back from uh, a certain place I'm not going to mention. Um, anyway, where should I start? Oh, yes. Yesterday, and I figured it had to do with the energetics of, you know, just the way space weather and all that crap's been. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if it was a mix of the allergy and the cold or what, but I was bedridden yesterday, and night before, or last night, I got about four hours of sleep, and I was very tired. I woke up with a stuffy nose, and I felt like my eyeballs were going to pop out of their sockets, and I was coughing up phlegm and mucus, and I was not feeling good, to say the least. I felt like crap. And <clears throat> it's also weird that this kind of coincides with some of the other chaotic stuff that I've been seeing for the last week or so, uh, primarily to do with just whether it's a naked guy running around at work with a samurai sword challenging people to fights and having police officers beat him into submission and throw him in a car or throw him oh, in an don't, ambulance. Don't forget the knife fight. Oh, and the black knife fight, yes, down the road that I witnessed. I was right there watching two black guys go at it and shanking each other. Yeah. But, of course, the guy wasn't naked with the samurai sword running around at work, but he was apparently running around in Ashland, which was only about 20 miles south of where I was, and he was basically getting out of his restraints, so the police officers had to stop at my workplace, beat the crap out of him, throw him into an ambulance, and take him over to 2 North, which is our local hospital uh, insanity ward. So, <clears throat> besides all of that fun, you know, and the scanner going off the charts talking about structure fires and uh, attempted suicides and homicides and crime rates exploding off the charts since the beginning of the year. And the fact that we've, got a, we've had a full moon, we've been in alignment with Venus and Mercury, and I figured on top of that that, uh, they decided that uh, the universe decided to throw some solar flares in there just for a little bit of extra. Hey, uh, Rich. Hey, Rich. Yeah. While you're talking about all this, you want me to 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 flip through the uh, solar flare butt rape again so that you can see it on the screen share while you're talking. I kind of got a good little glimpse of it while you were talking about uh, the internal malware stuff, on because I kind of came into it just about like five or six minutes earlier. Well, so. I'll, f I'll flip through it anyway, and you can look at that while you're talking, and, you know, you can check out the... Yeah, you can check out the rape. <laughs> okay. I'll just reconfirm everything I've already kind of figured was going on anyway. I figured this last couple of days has just been nothing more than paradigm cl clearing. Ugh. Still kind of clearing out a little bit, but doing much better today. Um, oh, yeah. C flares, C class. Just got a little bit of everything. Right. Just off the charts. Just constant, non stop machine gun flare. We're riding the rape train. Choo choo. Or the sun's got an MG42 and it's aiming at the earth and you're shooting just, you know, solar flares just like, you know, nonstop. But, um, yeah, it's not surprising that all the energetics have just been crazy off the charts. Just absolutely insane. Um, but anyway, yeah, the, the kind of heightened climax, if you will, was yesterday. Um, just not feeling good, bedridden. Obviously, there was something there that needed to go. Um, showed up to work this morning. Um, I was feeling much better. I'd gotten a good night's sleep. Um, My bowels decided to just go bam this morning, so more clearing there. 
And today has been nothing more than just absolutely all kinds of weird, hectic. Um, I've noticed more Geek Squad cars running around. Gee, I wonder why. Probably everybody's computers are going <laughs> like fireworks left and right. Um, I've also noticed at work, and this has been within the last couple of weeks, our fan, our main uh, modem fan in the back where the box is, went out. So we lost our internet, we lost our phones. That was last weekend. Um, and the site practically shut down for like 45 minutes to an hour. <clears throat> and it's, been, it's just been all sorts of fun. And today was just crazy. Uh, pump. We had a bunch of fuel pumps going bad and shutting off and malfunctioning. And the computer was, our computers were malfunctioning. Yeah. Just, oh, and just, I, yeah. I do believe Jay mentioned that we're we're headed really soon towards an uh, uh, lunar eclipse or something like that. So that's yeah, there's an, there's there's a lunar eclipse that's slated to be in the North Atlantic March 12th. So there's a high height of energy there. Um, <clears throat> we just had a full moon, and the new moon will be coming not too long after that. So we've just got a whole Lineup of yeah, Mercury, Mercury, Mercury went went out of retrograde and went into direct dick in the Earth's butthole, and then you know Venus joined it for this orgy of of freaking galactic rape, and then we had like a full moon or a new moon or something in there somewhere, and then getting then the sun joins in to this with this cosmic gang bang with all this. Freaking activity, so yeah, all the all the celestial energies are just fucking train raping the shit out of the planet here. <laughs> um, yep, we're just right in the center of intergalactic ground zero. Um, but yeah, today's been crazy. It's been a little bit psychotic, uh, but it's been manageable. Um, I can definitely tell we're kind of heading. Out of this roller coaster loop, if you will, and it's just as we predicted the much the the much the month of March has started off very energetically, which is kind of something me and David have been talking about at the end of February. We we were both saying March is going to be really interesting. Well, it hasn't been short of interesting; it's been very interesting. And, you know, that life continues on and things go well. So, I mean, if a head cold is the worst, or allergies or whatever is the worst that I get out of this, it's, you know, as far as I'm concerned, my immune system saying, hey, no pain, no gain. You know, the immune system's got to have a little bit of something every once in a while to fight. <clears throat> That's how the immune system becomes more efficient, stronger. Uh, because the body becomes more resilient, but, but um, you know, eight solar flares yesterday, five solar flares today. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, it's not surprising. You know, have Leonard Nimoy dying, you have, you just have all these, it's just crazy. Yeah, and the and the and the Canadians have been spocking their five dollar bills. That's hilarious. The Canadians have been spocking. I, their I, I should bills. I should really show that. I agree. Yeah, the Canadians spock five. That was pretty funny. <clears throat> it's just uh, you know, it has been pretty pretty relaxed. I'm you know been busy all day today. The energies have been keeping me busy in all sorts of ways. Yeah, there's the Spock 5. Rather brilliant. I do say so myself. Yep. There we go. They, they've been Spock in their money. Congress is like two drunks arguing the bar bill on the Titanic. Exactly. 
<laughs> you're welcome. I was the yeah. one who found that. You're welcome. Yeah, well, you'd even have gotten credit for it if you just uploaded it to your folder. Then it would have said, see where it says posted by Dave Kelso? It would have said posted by Richard Hamilton. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I did. I uploaded it to my admin folder. Huh. Well, then we have we have two copies of it, then. Let's check your admin folder. Do, 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 do. It's in that. I, upload, I was the one who first uploaded it. Okay. Well, we're about to we're about to see. Okay, there's there's Rich's admin folder, and there's our nice little fun with William Cock. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there there it is. Congress is like two drunks arguing the bar bill on the Titanic, hosted by Richard Hamilton. Yep, you're, you're, you're correct. Yep, and I tagged all of you guys. Yep, it fucking is. You dare <laughs> doubt me? Fools, you dare doubt me? I am William Cock. You will obey me. I am God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That was... That was... Uh... <laughs> That was great, and the computer reflection's perfect too, because it's like you know, it looks like laser, almost kind of like lasers coming out. <laughs> oh, hey, look! All these pictures and only one gun. Oh, but of course, all your pages are loaded with nothing but guns, right? Well, if you go to DA, technically <laughs> there's a point there, but yet again, it's kind of balanced out with a lot of other cool things. Where were you between four and six? Kindergarten, motherfucker! <laughs> oh, motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> <Kindergarten>, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, I wish, I wish the judge could ask that question. <laughs> Kindergarten, uh, motherfucker! Uh, where were you between four and six? Nah, kindergarten. <laughs> Oh, and then there's this. Yeah, uh, who original? Who? Oh, I think it was Desiree that brought this uh, this video to my attention. The audio is is irrelevant on it, but um, in fact, I'm I'm just gonna turn that down so I can fucking hear. Um, but I just put a description in here. That says, why you should laugh at people who think we're alone. So, God, source energy, whatever the fuck you want to call it, creates this ginormously massive place called the universe, and perhaps even a multiverse or omniverse if you really wanted to go quantum and get super technical, and then looks at its creation, knew that it was good, and said, out of the vast timeless infinities of my creation, I think I'll. I think it just makes perfect sense to put life on just one fucking planet, leave the entire universe with just nothing. Really, people? Does that make any logical sense? Well, yes, there's trillions and trillions of gallons of water on the planet, but only one type of fish exists because my smug, arrogant asshole ego says so. So there, I am William Cox, so fuck you. Get over yourselves, people. You're being improbable and silly. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see this video on here. Yeah, I've seen, I, I've seen this video elsewhere. Holy shit, now Katarina is calling. Hold on just a minute. Hey, Katarina, we're on a Google Hangout right now, broadcasting live. Do you want in? With Rich. We're talking about solar flares and stuff and paradigm shifting and the universe. Oh, well, thank you. But you know what? Let me call you back in like 
five minutes, give or take. But I'll, I will call you right back, so do not go anywhere, okay? Alrighty. Love you. Okay, Rich. Um, I kind of have to call Katarina back because she needs to talk to me about a few things, and she's not really feeling up to joining us on this hangout right now. So we can go about this one of two ways. Um, either I can mute out, unscreen share, and you can screen share and do and say whatever the hell you want and talk about whatever until I get back, or we could close this down. Whichever you want to do, what do you want to do? Well, I could say we could do part duets, as I am relatively rather, how do you say, intellectually drained right now. Ah. So you don't feel like ranting? No. Or talking I, about anything? I'm pretty good right now. Honestly. But unless we want to do part do it of this thing. Once it's all said and done. Yeah. Well, we, we could always have another hangout on similar topics uh, later. I mean, it doesn't have to be a part two of this. It could just be another video later about whatever we decide to talk about. Mm hmm this, this thing's been running for a while anyway, and I think we've, we've covered all the points, both cosmic and terrestrial, the internal and the external, the train rape and the William Cox and whatever else, so I think we've about covered it. We've covered it like a black dorky hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alrighty, so... Um, that ends this for now. And uh, Rich, do you want me to call you back on Skype when I'm done uh, with Katarina, or um, are you go heading to bed, or or what are things looking like for you? How would you like me to proceed? Yeah, you could call me back on Skype. That'd be good. All right. Well, um, everybody, thanks for watching, listening, whatever, and catch y'all later.